Hello everybody, my name is Paul DeWise with Forerunner 3D Printing and today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tutorial on how to design in threads uh, for 3D printing in SolidWorks. So uh, I have a basic shape here, just a box uh, with a point, some points uh, sketched onto it. We'll get back to those in a second. Um, but to get things started, you want to go to Features and Hole Wizard. And then once you're in your hole wizard, uh, you're gonna wanna go to straight tap. Um, in this case, we're gonna go to the smallest size that we 3D print regularly, uh, which is a 1032. So I'm gonna pick uh, 1032 position. Uh, I'm gonna pick this point right here. And we're gonna say up to next. Um, <clears throat> it's super important that you are not using the remove thread uh, option. You want to be using either cosmetic thread or tap drill diameter. Either of these is fine. Don't use that one or else it's going to throw everything off. All right, we're going to green check that. There's our cosmetically threaded hole, which is fine for, you know, most uh, engineering needs, uh, like if you're making blueprints or something like that. But if you want to print parts, or if, I'm sorry, if you want to print threads into your parts, uh, the cosmetic thread isn't going to do it. You're just going to wind up with a smooth hole, no threads. You could run a tap through it, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to print in the threads. So first thing I like to do is uh, treat it just like if you were going to be, be machining these threads in there. Um, you want to put a chamfer uh, on there. Specifically, the chamfer is going to be on the, uh, the side uh, with, um, or that your fastener is going to be going into. But honestly, it's best practice. Uh, if it's a through hole, put a chamfer on both sides. If it's a blind hole that doesn't go all the way through your parts, then obviously you only need a chamfer on the open end of the hole. Um, so in this case, uh, I set the chamfer size to 25 thousandths. Um, and that's because this hole is very small. It's a 1032 diameter hole. Um, normally once we get up around quarter 20, I would push this up to 50 thousandths and then that would be good going forward unless you get really large up into like, you know, one inch plus, you may get up into, you know, a hundred thou chamfer or something like that. But in this case, uh, we're gonna go with 25 thou for our chamfer size. All right, so we got our chamfers on there. Um, basically what those do is they just give you a nice lead in uh, for your thread. Um, <clears throat> so that you, it's easier to get your fastener into the hole if you have a chamfer on there versus if you didn't. Uh, it's just a, it's a, a nice to have when assembling these things. Helps prevent cross-threading. So next up, we're gonna go to the thread command. Now, <clears throat> I've added the thread command into my features uh, tab. Uh, your stock C to SolidWorks would probably not have this here. So what you can do to find the thread command is you can go up to this, this guy right up here and normally it's set to SolidWorks help, but you can go in and set it to commands. And then if you start to type the word thread in there, all of a sudden there it is, the thread command. Um, and I believe if you click on this button here, it will actually show you where it's at. So actually, okay, it is on your, look at that, I'm learning things too. It is on your features uh, tab. You just have to go under whole wizard to find it. So <clears throat> look at that, even I'm learning today. Okay, so now uh, there's kind of a lot going on in here, but don't worry, we're going to talk through it. So first thing we're going to do is define the hole uh, that we're going to put the threads on. So in this case, thread location, uh, the leading edge of the hole, which would be this edge, not the top of your chamfer, the bottom edge of your chamfer. That's super important. Okay. Then <clears throat> your uh, optional start face. I always do like to set the start face. You don't have to, but I like to. Um, and on this case, it's a through hole. Uh, so you wanna put it on the side that's closest to the edge that you picked. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, in this case, a lot of times it seems to pick up on whatever the tap drill size was that you put in there and figure out what thread you want. Uh, but it doesn't always work. So I always like to come down here and double check. Um, so actually, this is 1030, uh, 1024. We want to do 1032. So we want to do fine threads, not coarse threads. So it got the number 10 right. It just didn't get the, uh, the correct call out. So <clears throat> then end condition. You have a bunch of different options here. 
Uh, if you are doing a, a non-through hole, if you're doing a blind hole, you'd set this to blind and then you'd set your depth to maybe, uh, depending on the size and depth of your hole, maybe 50 thousandths off the bottom of your hole. Um, but in this case, we're going to go up to selection because this is a through hole. So we're going to go out the other side, up to the other side. Now, you'll notice that my threads don't actually come up through the top surface. They stop. This one does, barely. Um, but what would happen is if you left it just like this, there's a good chance you wouldn't actually be able to get your fastener in there because the thread isn't fully cut. <clears throat> so what I like to do is I like to do some, some nice big offsets in here. So in this case, 0.1 inches, and same thing on this side, 0.1 inches. And you gotta play around with uh, flipping the direction of the offset. There we go. So now our threads are going all the way up and out of the part, all the way down through the part. We don't have to worry about getting a partial thread and not being able to get our fastener in there. We know it's gonna go all the way through the part. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory also not anything you really have to mess with um you know a lot of this stuff if you just leave it stock is fine um if you read it and don't know what it is good chances you don't need it um or you don't need to mess with it uh so green check and there we go there is our hole with threads now one of the things that SolidWorks Corporation really needs to get on is an enhancement that allows you to pick multiple points and then do this once and just have it show up. But right now, if you wanted this for, for multiple holes, you'd have to do it at, you'd have to create a, a drill, tap drill size, put your chamfers on it, put your thread in it, and you have to do that over and over and over and over. Um, a little trick to getting around that so you'll notice in my tree over here, I have a, a sketch, a sketch four is just a single point right there. And sketch five are these three other points. <clears throat> you can use a sketch driven pattern and you can actually pattern this stuff around. So we're gonna go reference sketch. We're gonna pick our, uh, our initial point right there. Uh, features and faces, uh, you wanna come up into your tree and you want to grab your tapped 1032 tapped hole, chamfer, and thread. Okay. Uh, and then right here, uh, reference, we want to pick one of these points. Um, okay. And that should, actually, I think I might have these flipped backwards. I'm pretty sure I do. Yep. Try this again, shall we? There we go, now our preview's working. Green check. Ta-da. Now, you'll notice there was a moment of hesitation before it actually showed up. These features demand a ton of horsepower from your computer. Um, I'm running this on a desktop replacement laptop. Um, very, very powerful machine, and you can see it even took my machine a second there. Um, if you have a part that is gonna have a bunch of these features on it. Um, prepare to be waiting uh, for those features to render. Um, it's gonna take some time, uh, so just be aware. Um, also, you don't wanna leave these turned on in your design if you're gonna keep working on it. You're gonna to wanna to suppress the thread feature, um, so that way if you're designing in other areas of your part, you're not waiting for that big overhead to, to calculate every time you rebuild your part. So just keep that in mind, these should only be turned on right before you're about to make your STL. There we go. And uh, yeah, that is how you do threaded holes that are able to be 3D printed. Um, you don't need to do any offsets. You don't need to do anything like that. In our experience, uh, you're able to go directly off of the, uh, the thread designs that are cooked into SolidWorks, which originate from the machinist handbook. So, you know, they've been around since, geez, 1800s at that point. So there you go.